Welcome to Unit 3 of Economics, titled Demand, Supply, and Price. So in this unit, we will get to the fundamentals of demand, shifts in demand, elasticity of demand, as well as the fundamentals of supply and the costs of production, which you can also call the costs of business. So let me begin by giving a little overview about demand. Demand is the quantity of a good or service that consumers are willing and able to buy at different prices during a specific period. It's a fundamental concept in economics. So let's break it down a little bit. Imagine you're in a grocery store. The demand for a particular type of cereal, let's say crispy oats, depends on several factors. The first is price. As the price of crispy oats decreases, generally more people will be willing and able to buy it. This relationship between price and quantity demanded is known as the law of demand. But price isn't the only factor influencing demand. So other determinants include consumer preferences, income levels, the prices of related goods such as substitutes and complements. We will discuss those in details during our first lesson and expectations about the future. So understanding these factors helps businesses make decisions about pricing, production, and marketing. Uh, remember, demand is not just about desire. It's about the willingness and ability. These are the two keywords, willingness and ability to pay for a good or service. So as we move forward, keep in mind that demand isn't static. It changes based on a multitude of factors. And understanding these dynamics is crucial in the world of economics. So lesson two shifts in demand. Um, what we're trying to say is that demand does not exist in a vacuum. It's influenced by various factors. So let's say a study is released showing that eating crispy oats is linked to improved health. Suddenly, people are more willing to buy crispy oats at any given price, right? This is an example of a shift in demand to the right, indicating an increase in demand. So when we say the demand curve has shifted to the right, we are talking about a, an increase in demand. Now, conversely, if news breaks that crispy oats uh, is part of a product recall due to contamination, people may become less willing to buy them, even at the same price and sometimes even at a cheaper price. This shift represents a decrease in demand or a shift to the left. So an increase in demand is a shift to the right, a decrease in demand is a shift to the left. Shifts in demand can also create the changes in consumer income. If people collectively earn more money, they might buy more of the cereal, even if the price remains the same and it doesn't go lower. This is known as an increase in income leading to an increase in demand. So to summarize demand shifts when factors other than price, like consumer preferences, income, or external events change. Understanding these shifts is crucial for businesses to adapt and make informed decisions. So lesson three talks about the elasticity of demand. You may be familiar with the term elasticity from physics. Now, economics is not a science, but it is a helpful analogy when we talk about elasticity in demand. So continuing on with the, our, our theme of selling uh, crispy oats, a cereal, so imagine you're selling it and you decide to increase the price by 10%. If the quantity demanded drops by 5%, this indicates that demand is relatively inelastic. So inelastic demand means consumers are not very responsive to price changes. They still buy crispy oats even at a higher price because they consider it a necessity. Now you might think of popular products like Pepsi and Cola so you might see a when it comes to consumers, an increase of five to ten cents usually doesn't sway people away from the product. Now, on the other hand, let's say that same 10 percent price increase leads to a 20 percent drop in quantity demanded. This suggests elastic demand. Elastic demand means consumers are highly responsive to price changes. They're sensitive to price and may switch to a substitute product if the price of crispy oats goes up. So let's think of a commodity like soap and let's say the soap that you usually buy increases and you own a restaurant and it increases by 10 percent 
you might find an alternative, let's say a local soap that you can buy for the price that you used to pay for the one you had. So this means that elastic demand consumers do respond to the price change. Now, this is crucial for businesses to understand. You need to understand your product. If you have an inelastic demand, the company might increase prices to boost revenue, right? However, with elastic demand, raising prices could lead to significant drop in sales. Therefore, elasticity helps businesses set optimal pricing strategies and make informed decisions. Let me move on to the next slide, the next two lessons. Okay, so we're going to talk about producers. So in demand, we're usually talking about uh, sellers and uh, about consumers. When it comes to supply, we're going to talk about producers, people who make the products and people who buy these products. So supply is all about producers and their willingness and ability to offer goods and services in the market. Supply, like demand, is also influenced by several factors. One key factor is the price. So as prices rise, producers are generally more willing to supply something of product because they can make higher profits. This relationship is captured in the law of supply. However, again, like demand, other factors can influence supply, such as production costs, which is in lesson five, technology and government regulations too. If the cost of producing, again, crispy oats increases due to higher ingredient prices, supply may decrease, even if the price remains the same. The intersection of supply and demand determines the market equilibrium price and quantity, which is where buyers and sellers agree. Understanding the fundamentals of supply allows businesses to optimize production, manage costs, and adapt to changing market conditions. So finally, a little bit of our production costs. Now, production costs are divided into two main categories, fixed and variable costs. Fixed costs, like the rent you pay, uh, let's say, for an apartment or for a, an equipment, remains constant regardless of the quantity produced. Variable costs, such as raw materials, labor, they vary with production levels. So if you want to produce uh, one million uh, quantity of cars, and you're going to need more labor. So that is a variable cost. However, the cost of the rent of the facility of the manufacturing plant remains the same. So as a producer, you want to minimize your total costs while producing the quantity that the market wants. This means finding the optimal level of production where your marginal cost or the cost of producing one more unit equals the market price. Economies of scale play a significant role here. As you produce more and more, you can often spread your fixed costs over a larger quantity, reducing the average cost per unit. However, at some point, you might experience diminishing returns where additional production increases costs. Understanding production costs helps businesses set prices that cover expenses and generate profits. It's a critical aspect of managing a successful enterprise. So this will be it for the unit. We will, of course, go more in depth during class, break it down little by little and check your understanding. So I'll see you in class.